Henry, you are on mute. I'm still yeah, muddled about which picture. What was that? I'm still muddled oh. about which picture we're going to use. It says, uh, it says Wing Shun Mountains 3. It's the it's kind of the one that's all black and white. It's almost black and white. With yellow coming in the sunshine, which is really good. We can get that yellow in there. You know what I'm talking about? Is it the one that has the Getty Images on it? No, not the one that has Getty Images. So it's the first one oh, without okay. the trees. Yes, thank you. That's one. That's one. Yeah. Is it, that's George. George. Can you show us the fo the photo? Or yeah, it's here. hard to understand. I thought you wanted see the it? one with the gate. You see it? Is. It's up there. Do you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so on. That's the one. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's easy enough, right? Okay. Get to record, Rob. Okay. I'm recording, and then I'm going to have to mute my participants. Uh, wow. Oh, mute all. Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, I have all these paintings. Uh, of our mountains with clouds in front of them and things, but um, Henry suggested doing some mountains with clouds in front of them, and I said, "Well, what would you? Do you have any any in mind?" And he gave he he kind of threw me a curveball and had all these uh, these traditional mountains, which are amazing. They, I, I can see why. I mean, when you look at these mountains, they just look like the Chinese paintings. I mean, they painted them so many times. They've got like manners, like on, in other words, a, like a mannered type of stroke on how to go about doing these things. And I don't know all of those. Henry does. But uh, what I'm going to do here is just draw out here. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Let's just do a quick little value. And let me zoom in. Maybe have Henry do the demo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can you center your drawing a little bit? Okay, thanks. Actually, yeah. actually, you can see my drawing on my YouTube channel live if you want. Okay. Great. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see. Oh, that. you can yeah. watch it later after the class. Just watch Rob's live first. Yeah. Now we're going to do wet into wet today, you guys. So. So um, I'm drawing this background mountain here, and you don't have to get really accurate with it, and I'll show you why. You do a lot of drawing with the brush. A couple little guys back there. We got the main brush rest here. The brush, mess, brush rest mountains, what a great name. And, uh, and a few in there. So basically my lines are just to tell me kind of where to put things, not necessarily doing a, any kind of rendering with this. I'm trying to not put this dead center though. So that's one thing. Then I'm gonna just erase this up a little bit. Let's come in with a, um, where's my brushes? I put them all somewhere. So many brushes here now, I gotta get rid of them. Brush rest. 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 Brush r
washed out. Okay. Well, let's just, uh, now I'm just gonna really quick throw some, a little bit of water on there, not much, and take a dark color. Um, I'm using, what's it called, Prussian blue and cad red. Can make you a pretty nice dark. I mean, it won't be. There we go. And you know what? How about for these really background ones? You know, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting right into color, aren't I? <laughs> I should be just doing light and dark as we're doing a value. You know what? Let's just do the color rough. Let's skip the value because there isn't a whole lot of color in this piece. All right. I'm going to go back to um, Prussian blue and ultramarine blue. Mix them together. Maybe throw in a little bit of cad red in there. And you know, put in anything you like. This is making it very magenta. OK, there we go. I'll just throw that in there, pull down. And for a, for sort of a color value thing, I don't think it's necessary to get all your edges perfect. Remember, this is a, a rough, but what you can do is just maybe wet that edge on the bottom. pretty dark. And yeah, we get that light edge here on the bottom. So I would um, just use water along this edge. And then Let's go to the background. I want to make this a little bit lighter. And of course that fades. And I think this one here could go a little darker. Sometimes you just have to add that in. There we go. You know that if you, if you have too much blue, just throw in a little bit of red. I mean, in other words, if you need to neutralize that blue, if it gets too blue, a little red and a little bit of yellow, because that's going to make you an orange, right? Something like that. That got really dark. I'm looking at my uh, my screen. It looks way darker on the screen than it does here. Hopefully that'll dry up. And then we have in the background we have uh, some some lighter ones. <clears throat> I'm just gonna pull that right over the foreground there. And pull in some of those darker treetops. I'm using thinking about reds right now, just mostly thinking about color. Put a lot of soft edges in there. So and if your edges don't come out perfect right now, that's just fine. Um,
in other words, bluer as we get further away. <clears throat> Let's see. You might want to even go with, yeah. Like ultramarine blue further away back here. And this one should be a little darker. There we go. So I want to talk about modulating a few little hints of value in the clouds. And don't worry about any tree tops or tree. We'll get into that in, into the painting. But here's a, one thing I want you to try doing. Uh, you know, when I used to do murals, we would do tons and tons of trees. And uh, let me do this off to the side. So if you get a, a, a brush, it's kind of dry on the end. There's some pigment in there, but I've, I've separated the edges. What I do is that when I throw that down, I make this kind of motion. That would be an awfully big tree. But, you know, I'll do like this kind of motion. So where So you're, you're getting this sort of umbrella shape. Out of, out of your stroke. Can you see how the trees tend to form in that manner? So even your little, little ones, you know, the little ones, sometimes you, you can, you can do them with a big brush, but you just kind of like, you work your, if you work your brush in sort of this manner, tilting it back and forth like this, so tilting it back and forth as you put down the stroke, you can get lots of trees So it's a great way to get little treetops, like a lot of these, I don't know if I can get them on this, but I can, you know, little sort of treetops. It's a great way to get millions and billions of treetops with a uh, not millions of billions of strokes. That's something to practice these sort of canopy strokes, I, I guess. They just sort of run into this kind of umbrella shape. And not all of them do, some of them pull up. So occasionally, you know, as you're throwing down a stroke like that, I'll, I'll pull it up. And I can see some in the foreground that they do kind of sweep up. You know, down here, they're kind of sweeping up. Okay, so this isn't a really colorful piece, but it would be kind of neat to get some of that, um, some yellow into these clouds. So they don't know why they call them the yellow mountains. They don't look all that yellow. Maybe it's the yellow sunshine that comes in. Who knows? Hits the clouds. Maybe it's something like that. Who knows? Well, we'll, we'll do it our way. That's something to mention. Um, we'll do a lot of wet into wets too. So why don't we practice, you know, a couple before we get into it, a couple of strokes like, whoops, a couple of strokes like that. Let me zoom out on this a little bit more. And so I'll, I'll put down a stroke like that and then making sure to keep a wet brush around so we can, we can modify that edge and, and gradate it into something darker, or I'm sorry, gradate it into something lighter. Yeah, and if we wanna go darker on the other side, we can go darker and work that right into our other color. 
But one, one of the keys to doing um, lots of clouds, cloudy shapes is that they, they have these, they're, they're, it's about gradations. So, and then we want all those watercolor effects too. We want the blooms, the puddle marks, anything we can get out of it. So really to get the, to get these um, blue grays type colors, I, I'm really just using Prussian blue. I mix it with the ultramarine blue because that's a little bit redder. And then I'll throw a little red in there, a little cad red in there. And if it get, that gets too purple or violet, right? I just throw in the complement of that, which is yellow, like a cad yellow, maybe lemon yellow. I was using cad yellow, but the cad yellow, the lemon yellow makes sense too, because it's, it's got some blue in it. We want to keep it on the cooler side. Then maybe what we, we can do later is glaze in some of this yellow into our clouds. So let's, let's start this off. Let's start this off by, whoops, where am I? Here, I'm trying to zoom, move my thing around. There we go. I guess I'll move my, there we go. Okay. Are we moving to the big watercolor paper now? Yeah, this is the big watercolor paper. Let's now. How about let's just put in a few reference lines, and um, so so I do have these in the foreground, moving in this direction, and I'll draw mine a little dark. You don't have to draw yours as dark as mine. And uh, yeah. I was wanting to move. I actually think it's okay. Um, yeah, move these, this mountain here off a little bit over to the left so it's not dead center. And I love how it has the little, little peak right there at the bottom. This little peak right there at the bottom just to kind of keep you from going out. You might even want to throw in another little, I'm seeing a little bit of a, a counter to this around this area. So that's all fine. Then up here, we have this peak. I'm sure it has a name too. <laughs> and believe me, you don't have to get all this absolutely correct. I'm going to pull that up a little bit higher. Let's see, a little higher, because I want to. I want a lot of clouds in between, so I'm going to pull it up here. I don't want it to be higher than this, though, huh? I'll just make it smaller. couple of small background peaks protruding out that way. Maybe the, the key here is to bring this peak up a little higher. That way, I don't like to get that high because usually, you know, if you're going to frame something, you want some space in between. So take that down. be careful of your edges around the outside for framing purposes. Do you want you want some paper to go behind your your um, your artwork? I mean your your mat, excuse me. You have a mat that goes up there and you want some
want some paper to go behind that. So yeah, this one's higher, this one's a little lower. And then that gives me a little more distance in here for some clouds. What are we doing here? So the, the, when you're doing things like mountains, it really depends on this is this particular uh, mountainscape, obviously has been done so many times. I'm sure they have a name for every little tree on here. I mean, uh, and so people that are used to seeing that, they know all that. They, they know every little peak on here. There's, you know, somebody's named for this peak right here. Somebody probably named it after, you know, somebody more important than me. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, Uh, so the question is, do you want to paint this to make a, a total portrait of it? Or are you just using it as a beautiful excuse to paint? Um, I'll leave that up to you. I usually just use it as an excuse to paint, but I'm, I'm, I'm being fairly faithful to it. Uh, I think so. All right. Okay. That's about enough drawing. I mean, uh, honestly, I don't even think Chinese masters do any drawing. Do they just go for it? I think so. Ask, ask a Chinese master. Don't Henry, don't they just go for it? Um, probably. <laughs> they don't do, they use do, any, uh, do they do any? Oh, you're so humble. Uh, don't they do any? Um, probably, maybe they make a couple of marks or something. Anyway, you ready for the fun part? Oh boy, we're gonna get into trouble today. Ready? Big brush, just water, just water. And I'm putting some water down there in no small amount. Out to the edge, out to the edge. Now, if you're working on a block, yeah, just work it all the way out to the edge. But I'm working way out here. Sometimes I'll even, on my little clamps here, I'll put it under the clamp because I really want it that saturated. Wet into wet. Why yellow mountain called the yellow mountain? I don't know, oh, the, the stone, the rock. And just look, look, look at the glare. You might see a couple little places where you missed. And see the little hair you might see a hair in there once in a while mine just leave it if it bugs you like crazy i'll show you my hair taking off technique but you, mostly i just leave them but okay i'll show you i'll show you. You, you, you you twisted my arm okay here's what i do i get my brush like this like this and i just come on that's a stubborn model one. I just usually go like that and it picks it right up. They picked it right up. And then you mess up all your brush strokes by doing that. <laughs> so I would, I would uh, be careful. Get it all saturated. And then mix yourself up that color. Um, no, I'll, I'll start it off with a big brush here. Um, I'm using ultramarine blue. You know, in the background, I want a lot more blue. So on this background, a lot more blue. So you're doing just ultramarine blue, or did you mix it with a little cad red or with prussian blue now I, I use the prussian blue and cad red but i added way more 
of the uh, ultramarine blue. And see, it's all taken off on you like that. It's okay. Just leave it. Now here you can see I got a little bit, a little bit darker, maybe a lot darker. Now here, when I do these vertical strokes, and you notice how I'm using the corner of the brush. You don't have to use one of these brushes, by the way. But if you are, you know, I just use a corner of a brush and pull down, straight down, like that. Um, if you want some of these tops. Maybe we could do like this, just going straight down. So I have a, my my tip is a little bit split, and it's giving me some of those little peaks. Just pull it straight down into the clouds. And then you can use your just a wet brush, just a wet brush to kind of, if you have a hard edge at the bottom, just Yeah. I think it's actually darker than that. Now my my paper's already starting to dry up. this a little bit harder. And so as it's drying up, you'll get you won't get so much spreading. There we go. Something more like that. And then, of course, we can soften that edge by just a little bit of water. that soft edge so that that's one of the things here is you're just, you're just gonna have to keep hydrating the page and anytime you're doing any kind of uh, soft edge in, in the wet in the wet clouds especially Now, this is still damp. We'll see what I can get away with on this one. saturation of color so you know again you can probably see the red in the color there a little bit of yellow in there a little bit of blue in there um there we go and it's getting like i'm getting kind of a chiseled edge down here because it's it's getting quite uh quite dry so I'm just going to take a damp brush. And then come back with the 
this brush kind of messy like that. Kind of dry brush those edges and in other words, I'm spreading the edges apart like this. Like that. And then I come back up here and I can get some of those little peaks like just just by doing that. I go up and down and they look like they have little baby trees on them. But I, at this at this scale, I really wouldn't paint trees. Like that. You can always come back and reinforce a couple of edges too. That's pretty wet, so I don't know if this might be. Yeah, that's pretty wet. Getting dangerous. When it's wet like that, I'm, I'm probably it looks like I'm going to get a little mark right there. That might be neat. Um, I'm getting a neat little water mark right there. Can't wait to see what that looks like. So we'll see. Now this is pretty dry right here. Now, do I have to work it all wet into wet? Not, not necessarily. You could though, it'll, it'll give you another look. That's worked pretty dry and I kind of like how that peak came out. So. so what I can do here is just, I'm gonna get this a little bit darker. And a little bit of yellow and red into it too, because I, I increase a little bit more saturation in it as it comes forward. So I'm gonna go for something more like, yeah, more like that. And this is very vertical rock. So I'm gonna pull my strokes down like that, down, down, down. I have this, now this is pretty dry down here. So I'm, I'm running a risk of getting a, really hard edge there. So I'm just going to come back with water. Just water along that edge. There we go. Kind of cut some of the other color. That's okay. Whoops. Where's my brush? So the nice thing about this, this is fairly dry up here now. It's not quite dry, but it's it's fairly dry. I can get some really nice little well, this is a painting where the edges are a big deal. And so as I put those little edges on there, I'm just as I'm doing these little treetops, I'm going horizontally. I'm moving in this manner and I'm twisting my brush to get those baby little umbrella shapes like this. And then as, of course, as, as it dries, it gets lighter. So don't be afraid to hit a nice dark in there. And we have what, some that are going up this way. I'm going up here. There we go. So 
So, you know, let the water do the work in here. That's really dry. So if I want a looser edge, I can just, whoops. I got quite a bit of paint on it. There we go. Just a little bit of water on that edge. to just randomly in my clouds just with the water and maybe there's a little bit of pigment on my brush just kind of go around like that you get these little highlights in the clouds I barely see them smack of dark in there and if you have some little white spots where you missed it like that that would be one of those little areas I think I might just leave it just because I like it how wet is that it's pretty wet I keep testing it because I want to know if it's going to take that that stroke I just put down there is it going to dissipate it or is it just going to stay like it is I think it's probably needs to be a little bit wetter. So I'm just gonna pull that out with a little bit of water, just water on the brush. Wunderbar. Now I'm gonna take this little hillside down to the side there a little bit. And I really like this one that sticks up here because that makes a really good eye stopper right there. So, we can see how the Chinese get those wonderful calligraphic marks. I mean, I'm barely doing anything. The brush is doing all the work. There's something kind of coming up over here. A little bit of a hillside over there, which I like. So we don't just go falling out of the piece. And we can, um, uh, just take a wet brush again and lose some of that into just, well, it's supposed to be just a wet brush. One thing I like to do is put down a bunch of water, then take my uh, my rag and hit a couple of highlights in it like that. You can get some randomness out of it that way. Like that. You get just get the highlights and shadows and highlights and shadows, little pillowy things. case here it looks like our, our the uh, brush rest mountain let's rest our brush right in there <laughs> now the brush rest mountain um a bit it, more of the star of the show there so i would say all this over here gets quite a bit of mist in it but you know typically this would be much darker than that but in this case we're getting our darks in the center which makes a lot of sense 
could very well be that the uh, photographer or whoever took the photo staged that a little bit. Uh, who knows? Why did it just come out that way? But. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so. this mist coming through all this stuff here. I'm going to try a little bit different technique because in my painting right now, this is pretty dry. So, so the, you've seen me do this too before. So um, I'm going to take my color. It's a little bit greener. Very similar colors to the background, but a little bit greener. At least that's what that's the way I'm going with it. I'm gonna throw me a cad red, cad yellow, ultramarine blue mixed with your um, Prussian blue. water that down a little bit more. Okay. And on this one, let's just attack this number one tree right here. And then watch how I do this. I'm going to, I'm going to throw down this, the, the stroke of the, uh, the trunk, the trunk there. Here, I'll, I'll zoom in on this. photo and then I'm going to throw it down with those sort of umbrella strokes like that like that first and it, it's a little dark but I like it We've got a lot of mist in here. Wow. And for all of these other ones, just you just have hundreds and hundreds of trees that are let's just but you notice I'm doing this on dry. So that's why I'm getting these really distinct edges. See how you can just maybe a little bit lighter than that. Just adding a little bit of water. And I'm adding a little bit more red to my paint too. Can you move your? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. For going to I zoom in this much. Yeah, we'll take it up to there. So. Um, I'm just using the tips of the brush and keeping it pretty raggedy like that. So, you know, none, none of this, okay? Really keep it looser like that. And then I just rock it back and forth, rock it back and forth. Kind of steering clear of my little theme tree right here. And you know, you have, you have a couple of little verticals in there, so. I don't want to put too much distinction into these trees because it's going to take away from my theme tree. And then I'm going to take me to soften that edge a little bit, just a little water like that. Um, and that's called keeping a wet edge. That's all. That's all I call that. I'm sure other people have a name for that. I don't know what it's called. But see what I'm doing? I'm just see most of our information is found on this edge here. And we have a couple other little bit guys, but that's fine. We'll do those. I'll show you how to do those too. Got a 
another one back here. And I've got one in the background, like that. And he starts popping forward. He's of a lesser value, so I'm just gonna hit him with the rag, like that. Make him go back in space. Some nice little treetops in here. Little, couple little uh, branches. And again, with the water at the base, just, just a little bit of water. It's, it's the best. Okay. There's that one. Yeah, we've got a couple little hillsides back here. them to feel further away so lots of ways you can do it but you guys know my way I'm a stamper I like to stamp stuff so let's stamp that instant gratification love it okay Wonderful treetops in here. Yeah, so I, you know, I remember learning this from other mural painters. And um, I would say, how do you do? Like, we paint like islands way out on the ocean or something. And, uh, how do you get like those billions and billions of trees on the islands? Kind of. And they, they showed me their little tricks. And then I mixed it up with a bunch of my own tricks. Because I noticed that oftentimes they, when they would paint them, they they'd get awfully systematic looking. So I try to keep my, my little umbrella stroke here uh, random. So they're not all doing the same, the same umbrella stroke. But you know, even when they would paint them all and they would, every stroke would look the same, it still looked really good. Cause you know, on a, on a mural, you're looking at it from far away. So, you know, it doesn't, you don't see all the details. Right. Well, what colors did you use for the, the last set of trees? Uh, I'm pretty much using the same pool of color here, kind of a, 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 a greenish blue. So I'm mixing, I'm just mixing, instead of just using Prussian blue, which I could have used, uh, I'm using Prussian blue, ultramarine, cad red, and cad yellow. And I'm, I'm pushing the green in it. So I'm, in other words, you know, I don't have any idea exactly how much of each I'm putting in there. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah those are the colors I'm using. Is it, Rob, is it possible to just um, go um, make that whole painting uh, visible for a moment so I could just... Yeah. Let's move this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, would you go back to that, Rob, please, just a minute? Go back to what? Go, go back no. to the zone? I got it now. Thank you. Oh. No, no, the full. Go view, please. Yeah, we can keep it there. Okay, so, yeah, from, from here on out, I'm just... 
you know, you can't help it. You know, my little stamps are going to look so good on this. <laughs> no, I can't wait. I can't wait to stamp this painting. I'm going to feel like, like authentic. Um, <laughs> okay. More and more. And then occasionally as you do these, just pull up a little bit of a, see, like that, a little bit of a trunk. No, you, you can definitely throw down your trunk first like that and then throw some stuff over it, but uh, just like that. And then I love, look at that. Look at that mark. It looks, I mean, great in itself, doesn't it? The brush, you could just throw in little marks like this. And then come back with a little bit of water here and there. And then again, I'm, I'm uh, spreading the brush tip and watch just a little bit of water here and there. See what it does? Just you're not ruining the dry brush stroke. There we go. And then we go into this mist in here. So I'm really wetting that edge. It's just all kinds of lost and found. It's just so mysterious in there. Wow. And feel free to add any kind of colors you like. And these ones up here in the foreground a bit more a bit more distinct. So that'll be a nice little silhouette. And then just come around with some of that water. And as that, that mist just kind of comes through in, in here and behind all this and silhouettes behind these. So I just took the pot of color I used for this and, and added a touch more red to it. And we do have these little, occasionally a little bit of a, you can see a little mountain top back here or whatever. Um, if you want to put in a couple of those, Something like that, and then it gets two. Well, I like that. Maybe another one back here. That's maybe too distinct. So I'll stamp it. Just like that. I don't know, you can barely see it. I mean, it's like a half, not even a half, like a quarter of a value lighter than that. These are really subtle. Mist is so fun to play with. Just 
don't call me Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. That was awful. Um, you have to have fun, you know? Okay. I'm putting a little bit behind this. Bring it back there. I know these are dry in the foreground, so watch. Stamp. See? Looks like something in the background behind that. All that stuff is fun. Put in a little bit darker than I think. Oh, that's not too bad. This is, you're learning I mean, a whole lot of lessons in this one. Maybe very different than we're used to painting, right? The wet and the wet. We do wet and the wet, but maybe not this much of it. Now, I know painters are, now if you look at these, uh, it's a great thing. I should show you, huh? Ooh, I'm getting a nice little bloom right there. Nice. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna screen share this with you. So. These are some great painters. Uh, the California, you know, we are so lucky. California is a place where people have come. Let's see, California scene painters. Um, people came, especially artists came out here to get away from the East Coast, mostly. And, and with that, uh, that sort of art scene that was going on back out uh, there. You know, of course, there was a big push in the early part of this century, last century. And I wanted to share with you some of their paintings. Here we go. If it'll let me do it. Wow. Finally. And the, one of the reasons they use a lot of this wet into wet technique, and I'm sure very, very much influenced by Eastern painting, but these paintings are extremely strong. I think in the future, you're gonna see paintings like this. Um, I mean, if you're an art buyer, you might want to go this way. But remember, uh, California has always been a place where artists went to do new stuff. You know, they're trying to get away from all the influences of the East Coast. And every, you know, that's what happens in everywhere. You know, and now everybody's trying to get away from here. <laughs> and it just happens. It happens every 50 to 100 years. You see a migration somewhere else. <clears throat> um, but yeah, and every time you do that, every time that happens, there'll be a, a new art form that arises. So when every, now everybody's moving back to the Midwest and stuff, uh, you're going to see a lot of that. But look how big and bold and brave these paintings are. They're just, they're not, they're not finicky paintings. So let me get to this watercolor here. There we go. They are, see that? It is just boom. And very wet. See that sky? You can't get a sky like that unless you're doing wet into wet. See that? That's just one big, and it wouldn't be, I would not be surprised if this artist did this right on the spot. Not surprised at all. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is a very large painting, maybe um, 18 by 24, something like that. I painted with Milford Zorns before he passed. Wow, what a, what a great honor, wow. It was at Balboa Park and we did, he does banyan, banyan trees. Oh, the banyan trees, the crazy banyan trees, yeah. But he was a great man, he was going blind. It's very sad, but he was a good man. Well, he lived, wasn't he 100? Yeah, he was really old, but 
it was nice to paint with him. It was just amazing. Oh, what a dream. Do you know that he's on the top of the art world since the 20s? I've got his book signed by him. Unbelievable. See, look at this. Look at the sky. See that wet in the wet in there? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that is just, just, um, that's what happens when you've done hundreds of paintings like this. You just own it. You know, you do it, you own it. You don't even, you don't even sweat it anymore because you know what is going to happen. And, and you live for those little accidents and those little fun little changes. So anyway, these California scene painters are great for you to check out. All right. I'm glad you shared with us that you painted with Milford Zorn. What a great, what a great honor. I wish I could have done that. I did meet Wayne Tebow, who I think is about 100 now. Um, I actually shook his hand and talked to him a little bit. What a great guy. So anyway. Okay, so for some of these little nuances in the clouds, um, let me get out of here. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, I would... Take a little tone, let's say like this, through there. See it? And I'm all, you got to do this quick when you do it. See? It's just a dry brush stroke. I mean, it's a, and then I come with water and wet the edge like that. And I come with water. You got to be quick because uh, it'll settle. Mine's starting to settle already. So for some of those, you know, and then maybe, maybe just take your water brush here and just move it around so it looks a little more organic. That's one way to do it. I could have then wet the page too and put my stroke into there. This way is a little more controllable, but you gotta be quick. So any kind of those nuances you want to put in there, like let's say this, a little bit of there, you know, these little sort of very minor little tones in the clouds. You can, you can put them down first and then add a little water along the sides. I can hear just right off the page. I could certainly just dissolve that into. I'm getting a little ring around my mountains, which actually the painting does have a little ring around these hills, but I'm not sure that makes for a great, a great looking painting. I think it, it's still kind of the, uh, the focal point. And I certainly could, in, in the actual picture, it does have some darks in here. And I could come back and hit those in. I just really not sure I want to. Kind of liking the way it looks right there. So those, those issues are yours. Any kind of detail you like is. But now I'm, I'm uh, always with the back of the hand, you know. Oh, were you gonna, were you, were you thinking that I, that I was gonna smack my painting with the back of my hand? No. No, I feel it with the back of my hand, just to see, remember you got oils and sweat and it gets in your painting and then that's it. You paint over it and you get a fingerprint in your painting. Now, I'm looking at these back here and the question is, um, do I wanna make them look like those hills in the painting? Or do I love the way it looks already like this? I kind of like that. That's one of those things where I'm just gonna, I, I, I don't think it means, it's got enough weight back there to where it's kind of balancing out the piece. Um, I 
I don't think I want him back there, so I'm just not going to put him. Rob, but, did, did you forget yes. anything on the sky? Back here, I didn't put anything. Okay. No, but I'm going to do that now. And I what? I usually do my skies first, don't I? <laughs> Such a backwards. Okay. But one thing I am going to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a hair dryer just to speed this uh, demo up a little bit. So let me mute myself. Okay. Now, let's see here. I'm pretty dry. Dry enough to do a glaze. And I want to pay homage to the yellow, the yellow mountains. Because I, I really love that. Mm. And I want to just, I think I'm going to go with like a, a, the littlest bit of, of lemon yellow. And I'm going to, I'm just going to come in here with water again, just water. Saturating the whole thing. Why did I dry it first? Because if I didn't dry it for us, the painting, the paint wouldn't set into the page. And if I did this right over, uh, right over a wet painting, it would pull all up on me. You notice I'm not going over anything twice. I don't think. And most of our yellow is found in the white. So I'm going to throw just the littlest bit of cadmium. See, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, the littlest bit, boy, that's enough to do the whole page of lemon. Boy, I'm going to add a little water to that. I just want a, the slightest bit of yellow, and I'm not very much. But go ahead and take it right right into your mountains too, because you know you would get sunshine kind of going right through it, right into it like that. So very little. And I just I'm gonna take that up with my I'd rather have too little than too much. That's all I was looking for. Hey, look, red, yellow, and blue. Statements. That's all I wanted. And I got a lot of hair in my painting. And I'll just leave that. And by the way, I didn't hit this with a hair dryer when it was really wet, wet. Like if, if you hit a painting with a hairdryer when it's really wet, it'll, um, it starts blowing stuff around and gives you this, all these strange little artificial looking squiggy, little squiggy marks, which I guess could be fun in certain circumstances, but uh, um, I don't particularly like them in this style of painting. So um, maybe if I was doing something really, really, cutting edge modern than I would, then I really wouldn't care about anything. I would just go for it. But so that's all I wanted to do right there. 
basically. Um, I'll let that dry up a little bit more before I sign it. Signing this, I don't want to kill these trees here. How am I going to do that? I think I'm just going to stamp it. Oh, that, that demo went really fast. I mean, in this style of painting, you better work fast. There's no time for messing around. Probably better to do more than one. We do that uh, too in my plain air class when I do uh, really, really, uh, let's see. Really brave style paintings. Sometimes we'll, like Fovis style paintings, we'll do uh, two or three in a class. Oh boy. I want to use both of my stamps on here. <laughs> yes, you could. You know, I'm not really sure where the top of this little one is. I'm not used to the little one yet. Okay, just check it out. Um, the signature on the left side uh, of the stone. Here? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And so that should be where? Uh -huh. That's the, the left side? The, my signature is on the left side, always. Yeah. yeah. And then what, what size goes ups and down? Oh, is, oh, okay, as long as you keep it on the left yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, just the, okay. recognize the, the left, you should be fine. Now, is it okay to put this on the left side? Um, is it better on the right? Okay, let me see. You can put... Uh, hmm. Yeah, you can put uh, just on the right side, one uh, one on top, of the larger one on the bottom, the smaller one right. on, on top. Uh, big one here. Oh, small one, here. Small one small on top. One. Yeah, near the, the edge, not the, in the middle. Yeah, 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 that's about it. Okay, yeah, that's where, where you put. Okay, then you put uh, something under the... Um, okay, I'll, I'll let you know where you... You, you could do next. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I got too much in there. Yeah, the ink is a little too uh, too much, but that's okay. It's just a red right. spot, you know. Um, the next one, because the paper is still wet, I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's damp. damp. Yeah, the damp is good, but you have to uh, reduce the pressure when it's damp, I think. Oh. Okay, so next one you put under the cloud, uh, in the clouds, maybe a little bit over the overlapping with the clouds, it would be fine. Just uh, like a straight down uh, mm -hmm. with gravity align, aligned. So it, it could be uh, linked to the left a little bit if no space on the right. So you can align it to, to the um, Done, further done. Uh, a little bit above. Okay, let me see how big. It, yeah, that, that could be a little bit uh, yeah, to the right. So it, it's aligned vertically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the, a little down. 
will be fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, just in that area, block. it's okay to block the clouds. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah, just press harder this time. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's a very clear one. You're wow. good. You're good. Perfect. It looks good. Yeah, good. The heavier, small one actually balance it better. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I was just noticing, you know, Henry was telling me last week that, they, uh, you know, you can get many of them, from, I guess, from the owners would put their own stamps on it. Huh? The, the future owner <laughs> of the, the collector's yeah. seal, yeah, could be. Oh, yeah. Uh, Anywhere, if they like. That's the oh, cool. color source. Yeah. <clears throat> very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I think you did a very good job. Thank you. Very authentic. Well, well, good. Thank you. I just. It looks beautiful, bro. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I know it's not the total Eastern approach there, but I don't think you were looking for that anyway, right? I, I, I literally don't know anything about. Uh, I mean, I I've studied Chinese. And, you know, like I said in the art history class, that's been a long time. But uh, we studied the dynasties and comparing Eastern and Western art, but I never really got into detail. But anyway, so it's great learning about so much of this through Henry, like the different types of strokes and why artists would do that. And that's so important. Um, yeah, if, oh, yeah, yeah, we did really leave out one thing though, Henry. Uh -huh. We should put some of those, you know those birds? Oh. We should put a bunch of birds right here, like those check marks. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> like, like this. Right, the right we, the we oh. shape, the ones, yeah. <laughs> That's the, uh, yeah, the crochet. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, I lost connection with. I think I lost the connection with the meeting. I don't know if I should leave the meeting. Did you join? I've lost your sound. Can you hear me? And your image. Anybody else see Rob? I think we lost him. I, 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 lost, I, I, just lost, see, I, I lost him too. Uh, I don't see yeah, him. I, I lost Rob. Yeah, me too. I just <laughs> see some of you. Mine just came back. So <laughs> I, I see like all of you except Rob. I got booted off. Yeah, me too. I think we all did. Because I, I always have Rob pinned, so I don't see anybody else when they're talking. I only see Rob, but now I don't see Rob at all. Yeah, he's not in here. I gallery view, and I see everybody except except Rob. Well, OK. I don't know how to tell him. Rob, I see his hair. No, I don't see Rob at all. Oh, yeah.
Okay, while we are having trouble with their meeting, I will I will continue my my piece. I will submit uh, as soon as I finish it. <laughs> right now, I'm adding some uh, some uh, structured lines uh, for this midground. We should not see much in the distance, but uh, I still see some uh, structures. Okay. As, uh, as far as the value is correct, you can use any color in Western painting. Color is uh, very free, but value uh, needs to be correct. We'll just add some uh, random text. Hey, man. Uh, I cannot hear any sense. Anybody hearing anything? I think you but I don't see Rob. I lost Rob. No, no, it's only the upper left Oh, moving around. Never mind. Now, the speed deadline will be triple matched. If we can flip the Senate and ditch Mitch, we're already so close towards me. Oh, we got it. I think we're being hacked. This is the uh, Chuck Schumer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Dad, how about that? Wow. A little politics while we're at it. Oh, great. Okay. We're in this painting class to get away from politics, and they're hacking our watercolor class. <laughs> can't even find Rob's pin. That yeah. was bizarre. Oh, Rob is shaking his. Rob, unmute yourself. We see your finger, but you're muted. Okay, you're <laughs> unmuted. Can you? Oh, no, you're muted. I still don't see anything. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, we can hear. We just can't see you. Oh, can you see my painting? Oh, now yeah. I can. Yes. 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 No, yes. I can't see your painting, Rob. Yeah. It's yeah. very scary. Give it, give it a minute. It, it's got to it's come in. Uh, let's go back. And oh, there it is. Whoops, yeah. wait a minute. Let me pin it up here again. OK. Yeah, well. I don't know what that was, some sort of issue. I don't know if it was an issue with Zoom. That, that was a weird one. Oh, dang. OK, sorry. I keep sending you nothing. Oh. Everybody mute themselves so we can see Rob only. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll mute. I'll mute. Um, OK, well, everybody's here. OK, great. All right, so hopefully this will work out OK. Um, I'm pretty sure you okay, you can all hear me. So <clears throat> why don't we just you know just finish up, and at 11:30 we'll do the crit, okay? And I'll I'm not recording okay. now. Let's see, I'm not right, or am I? Pause recording. Oh, it is recording. That's weird. I didn't hit recording. I'll I'll pause the recording, and then I'll make sure. <laughs> I'm going to put a big old sign here that says record, Rob, at 11.30. Of course, I have Diane, but record, 11.30, there we go. Just, uh, 
I'll just put that right, right there. And just remember, anytime we have a problem with the connection, I may actually have to just turn my whole computer off and, and redo my connection or something. But this time I just turned Zoom off and did it. I usually do that first and that seemed to work. But if did that happens, what? Did you redo the record? Well, I'm not really recording right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll record. Thank you for asking. Thanks for asking, though. I'll record uh, when we do the crit. Okay. I, okay. I sent a whole bunch, but only one has a picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept sending, and I don't know what happened. Oh, anyway, okay. I shall mute myself again. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Oh, we have a lot of people already sending their stuff in. Yeah, this was a faster sort of painting to do. So maybe you could start at 1115. How about that? Yeah, because I have quite a number of people sending their paintings in already. So how about I start this at 1115? And then if you haven't finished yet, just just send it in as we go. But try not to wait till we're at the very end and then bombard me at the last second. Okay. Please, please don't do that. Um, yeah, Ethel, I'll go with the one that says Mountain Mist. <laughs> I think, yeah, that one's it. Okay, I'll go with that one. And I'll throw the other ones out so I don't get confused.
Rob, did you go dark again? I can't find you. He's still there. I I have him pinned, but I think he went away until eleven fifteen. He didn't pin his picture up so we could so other people could see it if they didn't pin it earlier. Did I saw it until you until you started talking and now it's gone <laughs> for me. Well, for me it is stable. I pinned it. If you go into his screen and you pin it, it should be there. I'm sorry, his screen is not there for me. Yeah, I don't I don't see either one. It's not there for me either. Actually, I found it. Uh, it's on the second uh, group, second section of the gallery view. Oh, there it is. Yeah, now I found it. Maybe it came back because it wasn't there before. Did you find it? Cause it's there now. Yeah, I found it. Thanks. Oh, good. Uh huh. It wasn't there before, though. I it was missing from me too. I think for a minute. Yeah, I don't know how to pin it on my iPad. I don't know if on the, on the Android when you're in the multi-screen view. If I double tap on it when it's in the multi-screen view, then it pins for me. That'll work on the iPad too. When you're in gallery, tap it twice. Yeah, it has to be in the gallery view though. All that happens for me is it just it stays there until um, someone talks. Yeah, and then it, it's not pinned anymore. But I got that. thanks.
Okay, it's 11.15. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. We've got a lot of people. Wow. Okay. Great. Plenty. Let's start with Vindy. Oh, uh, hey, Vindy. Take a look at my take a look at my screen here. I got something to show you. Got something to show you all. Ready for this? But especially Vindy, because she lives in the land of blackberries. Look at this. <laughs> look how big they are. That's my thumb right next to it. Very nice. <laughs> I mean, probably now, how big are yours? Are yours like twice this? They're about as big as one of these, huh? No, the wild ones are. Aren't quite as big as There's that. My right to... Yeah. Ours are a little, I can tell when I'm looking at the actual berries. There's a difference between a blackberry and a mulberry. Those would be the size of that home in Iowa. Those would be the size of the mulberries off the trees. Wow. wow. Not the blackberry, not the blackberries uh, on the bush. Trees, but those are off of bush rocks. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just got them from Trader Joe's. <laughs> You know what, though? I have to say, I was down in the Arroyo, and there is a special little place in the Arroyo where blackberries do grow. That's and um, and uh, I saw a lady from, she's from Italy, back there picking them. And she told me about them, and she, she sent me home with some of them. I thought, oh, gosh, thank you. She's doing all this hard work. She gave me some. And they were only like, I mean, each one of them was like maybe one one fifth this size maybe yeah and and they were really tart these are sweet i'm not joking they're like little they're amazing so anyway i thought i'd share that with you Rob, are you recording now <laughs> no not yet i will now okay uh thank you for letting me know resume recording okay <clears throat> and then let's get to bindi let me uh share the screen All right. All right. Wow. Hey, nice one. A lot of wet and wet in there. I like it, especially around here. I love this little gold, and I love how you brought it in over the mountains right there. Really feels uh, like you have these yellowy golden clouds overlapping the mountains. Yeah. That's a good feel right there. I like that too. I, I really was fond of the yellow highlights. <laughs> yeah. Did you do them at the very end? Yeah. Mm. Cool. Wow. Look at these little, look at these marks you got going up here. Did you get those by pulling down on the brush? Or? Yeah, I pulled yeah. down on the brush. I did that a second time. And because yeah. I had it sitting too high, it almost looked like it was floating up and not anchored. Yeah. And when I did it the second time, I pulled down into it and it, it seemed to work pretty well. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Looking good. Thanks. Now, did you did you try these ones the way I did with, with it being dry in the background and then pulled it down into it? I tried it, but yeah. my paper was too wet, so yeah. I redid them. Yeah, now so oftentimes when you do that and the paper is too wet, you'll end up with a little a little uh, a little mist behind it like this. Yeah. That you know that is totally fine to do because it still works. Oftentimes I'll I'll, uh, I'll lay things in wet into wet and I'll just get this sort of like uh, very faded faint something in the background and then I'll paint whatever my subject is over it after it dries or at yeah. least that's up quite a bit yeah so you know that happens uh, again look to those California scene painters they do that all the time oh, okay right. yeah totally uninhibited painters just just they just go for it and whatever happens happens. 
The part that I'm not happy with is the very foreground where my signature is. I lost that tree completely. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to get it white again back there, huh? To yeah. silhouette it. Yes, and I didn't want to go in with pen, so I just left <laughs> it. <laughs> I wanted to do one without the pen. <laughs> so there's the issue of uh, maybe the first thing I would do to correct that would be to wet the area. Mm hmm and then try to pick up as much as I could with the brush. Try okay. to pick up any extra. And then, uh, you know, the more it dries, the more it sets into the paper. So it's, it's harder to remove the more it dries, right. but you still can. And then I would lift off as much as you could, then paint it, paint the silhouettes back over it after that and see what happens. I mean, okay. but it's, you wanted you wanted that light background again, like like maybe like this back here. Yeah, and that's hard to get back there. Yeah, it's not bad though. I mean, um, it's mostly this just this these darts right here. Right. Better see if like, can, maybe I can get those with the magic eraser. Well, you could try. I, I don't know. Does it will the magic eraser erase off? I don't know. Uh, it does some stuff. I don't know whether it'll do that deep at all. No, 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 the, not that kind, the, um, the, the Mr. Clean one, you know. Oh, the, yeah, 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 that, that, yeah, Mr. Clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, if you guys know, have you seen those Mr. Clean razors? razors? They're, they're, they're like a sponge, they're really like this kind of strange fun. They, I've seen them, I've used they them, they work. work. It, you have to work at it a little bit and not rough your paper up too much. So now I'd be more inclined to come back and back over with a bristle brush. I, yeah. I see your Mr. Clean over there. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Claire. I think um, they have some type of abrasive embedded in your sponge. And so it, it kind of takes off the outer layer, like when you're doing paint on a wall. It'll actually scrape that outer layer of paint off your wall. But Yeah. Yeah, I would be more inclined to do a uh, with a bristle brush. Pick it up with a bristle brush and stamp it with okay. your uh, with your uh, paper towel. Okay, that's the way I do it. Other than that, I think you're looking pretty darn good. Now, um, right? You, yeah. Now, what I did is I kind of curved this up a little bit, a little yeah. a little bit of something over there, like another little counter to sort of keep the eye in yeah because this one right here you you have enough soft stuff here where it doesn't really keep it doesn't really pull you out this could start to so then i might i might think about countering that with a little bit of something there and not, okay. not a lot okay great all right thank you thank you mm -hmm. okay let's let's go back to Oh, oh wow. I, I have a number two. Maybe Court can go to oh, number wait. two. Okay. You're way up here. Okay. What? Why isn't it? It's not allowing me to zoom into it. Huh. Blame Chuck Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm control, I'm hitting control and rolling my wheel to get it to come forward. Yeah. So that's weird because on Zoom, I don't know why, but on Chrome, when I use my wheel on my mouse, it skips three. I don't know why it does that, but it doesn't do that on my, it doesn't do that on Firefox. So I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, now you're really hitting the blues in there. Yep. And, and so it looks, I mean, I don't think, I don't know if Chinese use blue, but uh, it looks a little monochromatic. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's true. So now if you wanted, and then, I mean, you could certainly leave it like that because it, it, it looks fine. But um, if you wanted to add a little bit more color, you could come in and glaze in a little bit more 
warms and cools and possibly some yellow into the clouds. Did you hit yellow in the clouds a little bit? No, but I did hear some red, which um, yeah, I, I see crash and blue. Yeah, I can see some cad red up there. So, and that's really just a personal choice. So I'll leave that up to you. Um, and right, so you see these these random sort of choices you're making in here that they'll they'll dissipate the more you add water to them. So should I make them dissipate? <laughs> should I? I think I think they're fine. I think they're fine. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then I, I would, as you're, you know, it looks like you're maybe maybe you pushed right here with the uh, rag or something. Um, maybe. I don't know. Maybe with the brush. With the brush. Sorry, the rag. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I have to say about that is just, just try not to get the one, two, three. You know, and and pretty pretty similar sizes. What I this one's random enough. You know, maybe add a little bit more off to the side here so you get a, a more connected. Yeah, a little less uh, repetition, that's all. Just just a little less, that's all. Um, cool mountains in the background, too. Love it. Such an unusual choice today, huh? Yeah. Uh, to go with this different technique. And and the difference between one and two, this is number two, is I realized my oh. forward mountains were sort of, they were this, the brush stroke were not totally uh, vertical. So it looked like it was a little tilted. And that's why. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you were, yours are very vertical brush strokes. And I guess it's important for these types of mountain rocks, you know. Yeah, in this case, they, they're pretty vertical. You know, I, I, I thought about that later. They looked at me and go, yeah, they would be pretty okay. But, you know, sometimes I'll do that and my, my, I'll, I'll, I'll not be vertical either. So I, I know, I hear you on that one. I've done that before myself. So you actually did two different paintings? No, no, no. I, I um, turn in my first one and then looking at it, I said, this yeah, is, is tilting over. It's going to keel yeah. over. <laughs> so I, I straightened that up and then I yeah. added two more things. Well, the way you're fading your mountains into the clouds is great. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we're looking for, which is almost the whole reason to do this painting. I mean, it's a uh, it's a, it's an exercise in gradations. So much of it is, and, now, and a technique of wet into wet. Yeah. Now, one question I have is just a general question, but it applies here. Is I was always told if you want to make something come forward, you yeah. uh, put some darker value behind it. But if you look at the mountains at the top to the right it's the mountain that's forward that the edge the edges are are um forward and it's the lighter value that's behind yeah. so it's i guess it works both ways or yeah you, you it's it's not uh, one or the other it's the contrast that makes it come forward okay okay yeah so i wouldn't yeah it's not a dark behind something that makes it come forward it's the contrast so um in our case yeah, we, we put the contrast in, into the middle area and leaned off the foreground although i did put quite a little bit of contrast in my little my little theme tree over here off to the side mm -hmm. which is sort of a kind of a i would call that a uh, supporting focal point oh, okay. um so but that's that's fine you, you yours is, is working compositionally yeah yeah well thank you the, these thank photos you. Just master. Oh, I love the photos. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Let's move on to where are we back here? There we go. Francis. 
Hey, Francis, really light. Wow. Oh, you know, and by the way, um, just so you all know, uh, this just came to my head. Uh, if if you want, if you don't want to stay for the whole thing, the whole, you know, you get it on the recording. So just leave your piece on there, and I'll I'll um, I'll uh, I'll just critique it, and then you can look at it on the recording rather rather than staying for the whole thing. You you don't have to stay for the the whole demo, I mean, the whole uh, the whole critique. Okay, because I, I know the critiques can go on for a while, so um, that's the best way to solve that problem. Okay. Pretty colors. Wow. Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Really pretty colors. Really light. So, I mean, I really like these kind of colors. I mean, I know it's red, yellow, and blue, basically, but I mean, I really like this value value scheme too. Very light. Now the nice thing about this is if you wanted to come back into your focal point up here and hit a little bit more contrast, um, you know, you could. <laughs> if you wanted to. Now that's a bit too much, but if you want a little more contrast in the focal point, and because you have a pretty fair amount of contrast here, I don't think you really need to hit that any. Okay. But if, if anywhere, if I were going to work on anything more, um, I would probably yeah, work the shape on. shape is not good there, you know, there to the left, but anyway. Mess around with the shapes and the edges. The, you know, all the little, all those little fun things on the edges. And remember, you can throw them on there with a dry background. And if, it, if you needed them to be softened a little bit, just come in with a damp brush okay. and that'll give it to you. Okay. And then on the bottom here, I would just wet the edge and fade it right into your clouds. Just, just a wet edge. Okay. Other than that, I think you got the idea down, you know, wet into wet, and then you got some nice looking color in this. Um, any other questions? No, nope. thank you. Thank okay. All right, thank you. All right. Let's see, we're at Jane. Jane, how many did you send, Jane? <laughs> I got two here. Oh, you put the thing around it. I mean, it's just I put a frame around. Yeah, it looks great that way. You know, that might be something we, we all might want to start doing. Well, I just have a whole. I order these ready mat, ready cut mats. Yeah, and they work with a quarter. Key. And yeah. so I can always stick it on and see what it looks like. Hey, Jay, where do you live? Are you right here in South Pass? Pasadena. And, and I'm, for some reason, I, I'm not. For some reason, I'm not getting your voice. Uh, it's it's coming in okay, but it's kind of breaking up a little bit. She's well, kind of my connection in. is not great. I'm I'm up in the mountains in Idlewild. Oh. We have a house up here. You're in Idlewild. Yep. Oh, okay. That's We've had a house. Yeah. Oh, I love it up there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my, my grandma used to live in Banning. Yeah, my, I used to visit my grandma in Banning, and I'd just go up the hill and go up into the mountains. Not very far. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Pretty dynamic composition here. Um, let's see. Because you got the you got this, this, and this, and that. So yeah, the more you, the more dramatic you get with. So you go from dark to light, and it it actually did do that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So so sometimes what I might try doing is in, in like this area. I know I talked about hitting that, but I might just fade that a little bit in there. 
make not it that much. Less. Yeah. Not not quite yeah, that it much. Is, it is quite dark. There's a lot of contrast. Yeah. And then what I might do is, if anything, I would have. Uh, I don't think I do it now. now. But if anything, I might have treated these a little bit lighter because they're almost this value. But darn, it's not bad at all. I mean, this is a nice piece. Right. I mean, it's framing nice too because you got these great, look at these great diagonals here. There. Nice diagonal. And even this, this sets itself up into a pretty nice diagonal line right through there. Um, so yeah, if anything, really I would like, like the ones in the back. Just, but at this point, could I just take some uh -huh. water and lighten them a little bit? You might, might be able to do it. Um, I would. What, what I would do is just take a big wash of water over the whole thing, right? Let it sit for about a minute, uh -huh. and then take take your uh, paper towel and kind of stamp it and pull it off. And see what happens. If you get a little bit of texture from the paper towel, which you probably will, you might want to just play with the paint and massage it back into. I, I, I've done it, so it, it could work. It certainly could work, yeah. And I might do the same technique with this area right here, with, which would probably work even better with right there. Sure, yeah. So that's it. That's in a way, you know, usually when I talk about staging a painting, uh, typically I'm talking about like, putting shadows around the outside or something like that. But what you're doing is staging the painting in a backwards way by adding a little bit of something lighter and something lighter into these areas or getting a little bit more, more of our focal point that way. Right. So right. interesting. Um, besides that, I think you're looking pretty darn good. Pretty darn. Like the yellow, yeah. This real, these clouds into the mountains is perfect. Great. Just following along with what you with you, it helps yeah. a great deal. Thank you. Yeah. Now, we've had a house in Idaho for over 30 years. I've taught music wow. at, the, at the summer school up here for 40 years. Oh my gosh, years. what a dream. Yeah. I love those. Is it a it's cabin a or a house? Well, um, people call it a cabin, but it's modern. It's a oh. great view. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll send you a picture. Maybe we can paint wow. that view. <laughs> Please do. I love it up there. I, I love hiking up there. We usually, my wife and daughter will stay in Palm Springs, and I go up the hill. I want to get up there and hike, so I usually go hiking up there. Yeah. 